Well, hello everyone and welcome to Painless Universal Conversation with myself, Anne Walsh. Today we'll be talking about transformation through conversation. How do you change your outlook? How do you change the perspective of things through a good conversation? My guest, Nicole Yates, will tell us just how she's achieved this and using this to help others to radicalize and change their perspective of things through a good conversation. Let me tell you a little bit about my guest, Nicole. She brings 20 years of leadership and counseling experience to her work as a coach and communicator. She's a passionate about facilitating environment of safety for those who are vulnerable. And she communicates to identify obstacles, keeping them from maximizing, utilizing and reaching their full potential. As, she's, as a speaker, she brings in many years of uh, wisdom to her platform. One of the things that really inspires me and I want you guys to um, on, uh, listen to when you listen to our conversation is the way she brings in faith in her transformation movement. She uh, appeals to both the faith and leaders environment alike. A good thing about Nicole is that she's written a book called The Miracle Moments how tough conversation can actually transform your most important relationship. And I mean relationship in marriage, relationship in business, relationship in being a leader. How the most important conversation can transform this. We'll be talking to her about this and asking her, how can we transform our conversation through talking? I can't wait for you to meet Nicole. She'll be telling you a little bit about herself. Join me as we meet our amazing guest, Nicole, to share her amazing conversation. Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. As I said in the introduction, today's conversation is one I think you will find so meaningful because it's all about transformation through conversation. You know, a lot of us want to talk, but we don't really want to have that tough conversation had because we always feel what impact would that conversation being had have on our lives? You could be not knowing that true your business life, your um, your career, your uh, if you're need any lead kind of leadership position, this could really change your life. Today's conversation with Nicole should be addressing that, especially she's an author, she's a speaker, and she'll be telling us about her book and many more. And Nicole, I'm really delighted to be to and talk to you today because. You are someone that um, anyone who reads your profile would be truly amazed about. You took this thing on, transformation through tough conversation. I, you know, I've never thought about it that way, but I'm so glad you have. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. I am uh, just uh, trying to exist in the present. I think that's the gift of this season of disruption is we all have an opportunity. And that's what I think this book is so timely is because many people I know, they're, everyone I know, their relationships have been disrupted. Their work rhythms have been disrupted. Their, their way of understanding their influence has been disrupted. And disruptions can be opportunities to actually stop, pause and ask, what am I really about? what do I hope will remain of my legacy of my influence after my time is done? And most of us have not really asked those questions. And so this is an opportunity that we're in, in this disruption. So uh, the book, although we were already planning on this book, Miracle Moment before uh, COVID, it certainly came and ended up launching at a very timely time. And, um, unbelievable, because it's really timely. That it's, it's such a great book to come out at this time. But before we go into all of that book, can you just tell me a little bit about who you are? Because sure. you know, everyone who reads the book will want to know who is behind this book? author writing such a beautiful book and meaningful in, in every way. Absolutely. Well, um, I am a first and foremost, I am a uh, wife. Uh, my husband and I have been married 24 years. I have three oh. teenagers. Okay. So I'm a mom and uh, the, the sort of theme of my life, which by the way, most of us cannot find unless we're looking in the rearview mirror. So this is not something I recognized until more recently that really the theme of my purpose in life has been asking the question, 
can people really change? Mm -hmm. And that was coming out of my own story, my own desire to say, can I be different than my reactions and my role that I've played in my family of origin and all of that. And so that question, that heart question for me, um, I started my career in fitness. So I was asking the question, can people change their bodies? Can they change their health and their, and their behaviors? And then my career took me into therapy. So I was a therapist, a mental health therapist, where I was asking the question, can we engage with our emotions and our stories and our past in a different way? And all along that thread, I've always um, sought a greater purpose and, and found a lot of life in God and specifically through Jesus. And so then my, my story took a turn and I actually ended up as a pastor. So I began to shepherd people's souls around the question, can we change? Can you forgive? Can and you um, find purpose in life. And so that's all sort of brought me to this point where my work is very holistic and I'm about that big question. Can people change? And this book is really about, can we be different in relationships? Because we have powerful reactions to, and defensive reactions to conflict. And can we really change? And how, how do we do that if we can I love that. I love that bit about relationship because mm -hmm. everything we do in life is all about our relationship. I don't. When people think about relationship, they think a relationship is just between and getting married, having that relationship. But relationship is at work. Relationship is how you deal with people you meet on your day to day basis. Can you that's change right. in your observation of them? And that's the way I view relationship because I had to change my own concept that relationship is not just between my husband and I, but it's also the relationship you also have with your kids. Mm -hmm. And you focus a lot of your work around that relationship as you just said what led you on that path of that mm. starting to observe why relationship means so much in how we progress in this world yeah yeah you know I think in this technology age um, and in a, a season I think in the world where it feels like a lot of life is about your output it's about what you do and how successful you are and I was very driven by that I, I thought I really did believe a, a lie that um, in order to be loved, I needed to be perfect. And I write about that in another book about how we come into those agreements and what that looks like. But, um, and so I was really living to say, I just need to achieve, achieve, achieve. The more I get, the more I can accomplish, um, the more fulfilled I'll be. And it didn't work. <laughs> it just, it didn't matter that I was successful. And in, in many ways I have been successful and people will look at my bio and be like, wow, you've done a lot. And what I want to say is, um, yeah, maybe I've done a lot. Maybe I'm wired that way, but doing a lot has not brought me life. Doing a lot has not done what I thought it would do. And one of the things I love, there's a uh, psychologist named Maslow who wrote about sort of positive psychology, the father of positive psychology. And he talked about this idea that our need for connection is actually a deficiency need, which means just like when we're hungry, we need food. And if you get hungrier and hungrier, you will, you will focus only on food. You, you can't think about anything else. Or if you're thirsty, you're like, I can't, I got to get a drink. Mm -hmm. Well, actually connection is also a deficiency need. Meaning if we don't have it, we'll begin to try to figure out how to get it. And so many of us, including myself, have tried to get that need met through achievement, through appearance, through approval, through likes. And it doesn't work because we're actually wired for relationship and close, deep relationships, what I like to call 3D relationships, not a 2D screen relationship, but 3D relationships where you're, you have all of your failings and you have your morning hair and you have, you know, all the ways that you mess up and are impatient. Those are actually the relationships where we will find life and connection and we've got to work at them. And most of us have never been taught. We have very few tools in our toolbox when it comes to relationships. And I want to remove the shame and the stigma from the feeling like I'm not really good at this, but no one ever taught me, but I'm supposed to be good at it. <laughs> That's what a lot of adults uh, feel like. We all think we're supposed to have arrived. And I just am really feeling like, Hey, you, you haven't arrived. And there's a lot of tools that are out there and you can, you can get all the help you need to make those tools really work for you. That's amazing. Um, your book, I truly love it. Um, it's called The Miracle Moment. Big, good title as well. Because I, think <laughs> it, I, I, I have to ask you how you got the title because I mean, yeah. The Miracle Moment. Uh, what is that title? What does it truly mean? 
Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you asked. And I think you're the first person who's asked me this question. Uh, so this was the untitled book on relationships. And I, I wanted to title it how to get what you want. Like, I just was like, I, I wanted to, I wanted to appeal to the part of us. That's like, I want this to be better. And I'm like, Hey, this is actually about you getting what you want in love and in work. But yeah. the, the path there is probably different than you expect, but my editors turned that down. And so after I wrote the book, my editor came to me and said, I think you actually named the book yourself in the intro. And in the intro, you mentioned this idea of a miracle moment, which is not the moment when you react. So, and in your life, your husband, your family, your work, your producers, your, there's moments with all those people where we feel missed. We try to communicate and we're either disappointed at the response. We find ourselves defensive. We, we feel frustrated. We all have moments like that in our relationship. That is normal. And the miracle moment is not about those, those moments going away. It's about what you do in the next moment. After you feel like you want to shut down or after you withdraw or after you're like ready to blow up, it's the next moment where things can change for you, where you actually begin to understand your reactions and you have new tools to lean into those relationships rather than all of these normal patterns that we develop over time. And those patterns are usually related to a very long sort of route in our life way back to when we were kids and we were figuring out how to cope with the world. You know, the world is a very scary place for kids. I actually think it's a very scary place for adults and we develop ways to cope with when we're scared. And a lot of times, a lot of us have never grown out of those or, or examined those or understood how we could respond differently. So miracle moments are about those next moments in our life that we can experience. How can, and um, tough conversation because I think that tough conversation is one of the hardest thing in any business, any leader that you want to have. You are going through a tough time. You're having to tell someone, your employee, that what they've done is absolutely wrong. And you need to have that conversation to make them a better person, to mm -hmm. be listen. And you, you, your, your book is really about the miracle moments, how tough conversation can actually transform your most important relationship mm -hmm. okay, I must ask you how can we transform our most important relationship because I think this is something everyone needs to know is yeah can we transform that what can we do to help us it's such a good question because my hope is that all of you guys listening and watching would be able to grab like an actual practical tool just for even right now so here's my very favorite my very first home-based tool for you which is you need to decide who you want to be. And what I mean by that is not what you want to accomplish, not what you want to achieve, but who do you want to be? If we're all at your 80th birthday party and we can picture this birthday party where you're surrounded by your loved ones and people are making a toast to you and it's not about what you've done, it's about who you've been, what words do you want to hear? Do you want to be more open-hearted? Do you want to be forgiving? Do you want to be courageous? Do you want to be authentic? Finding those words and starting there before you even enter into your relationships, because that's what happens. A lot of us just act and react to the relationships we're in. And we take on a villain mentality, I'm always bad. Or we take on a victim mentality, I'm always the one who has people hurting me. And we're not really stopping to say, wait a second, I have agency. I have, I have freedom as an adult. If you're not in an abusive relationship, those are, that's a separate conversation for another day. If you're just a normal person in normal life, you have the agency to actually decide who you want to be. And when we know those words and we're like, I am moving to be an authentic, courageous, open-hearted person. When I get to that tough relationship or that tough conversation, I can ask myself, what do I need to do to become more of who I have decided to become? Now I can enter into this relationship being like, okay, the way I respond, is this me, be, me being more forgiving or less forgiving? Is this me being more courageous or less courageous? And then we can enter in from that place. If, if you hear nothing else today, that would be my, my sort of charge for you is imagine that 80th birthday party, find th two or three words that describe who you want to be. And then think about that relationship that's challenging and ask, what would it take for me to be that person 
in this relationship? Yeah, you, you you always bring some practical advice. I think this is one of your um, your great strengths. It's good practical advice mm -hmm. you give to people in creating um, those miracle uh, moments. If if someone comes to you now and say, "Okay, I'm so stuck because you, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a leader. I'm having this really challenging time." Mm -hmm. What are some practical advice you give them to give them some clarity so for them to be able to pursue their growth that they're looking for to get to the next level? Absolutely. Um, and usually if a leader comes, which is a lot of the work I do is with leaders. And a lot of times um, Einstein said, you should take 55 minutes to determine the problem and five minutes to solve it. And so a lot of times with leaders, they just need the space to figure out, am I solving the right problem? And so when it comes to challenging relationships, sometimes we, we need the space to be like, okay, let me really name reality. Like what is happening here? Cause we bring our whole selves as leaders. I'm responsible, right. For the organization or for the team. But what I also am responsible for is myself. And I'm bringing my whole story into the room. When I come into the room as a leader, I'm not just a, a floating head who can sort of give orders or people are responding to who I actually am. So with leaders, I love to ask that question. Okay. What is going on with this particular person? What is it triggering in you? Let's find some of your, your, your actual reactions in your body. Um, what, what's, tell me what's playing in your head right now, because sometimes the person who's across from us, let's say it's your boss, Sometimes that person across from us, they're actually triggering an older story in us. So we're sort of reacting to a previous story when we're in the room with this person. And it's, it's not that um, knowing that will make it less challenging, but it will help you to deal with your own stuff first <laughs> before you deal with the person and what's going on with them. Um, and then I love to ask leaders, hey, can we do a little worst case scenario game here? Really, really go for it. Like, tell me in your mind, what your worst case scenario is just the worst what's really happening and what most leaders realize is they have very irrational narratives about what's going to happen it's like and then this is going to happen and then the person's going to turn over the desk and then my life's going to be over my company's going to close down it's like okay can you hear yourself like wow no wonder you feel so emotional like you're you're having such a reaction to this moment because you've got this narrative in your mind so how do we name that past narrative name that future fear narrative, and then try to deal with like the actual reality that's in front of us. Um, a, a third, here's my third trick. That's is a non-book trick. This is just another one that I use with my clients. Um, I love the phrase. I do it for myself. Read your life. Let's just step back and read your life like a book. What opportunities are open to you? Which ones are closed? I was just working with a client who works within a company. He was running a department and he had told me before that he had a dream to be an entrepreneur and to start his own thing. So I was following up with him and I said, Hey, where, where are you with that? Because you seem very settled. You seem very settled in the work that you're doing, taking on this new leadership role in your department. But you had told me that you were planning to leave and start your own thing. And he said, you know what? My wife and I sat down and for this season in our life, we have a two-year-old and in her wisdom, she just was very honest with me that she didn't think that this was the right time to take that kind of risk. And I said, that's amazing because what you're doing is you're reading your life. You're agreeing that this is not the season for this particular dream. And you're closing the door on that dream to be fully present where you are right now. You're reading your life well, and you're accepting limitations. You're accepting choices. Um, one for me is my husband, the town we live in, my husband's home office, his company is here. So when I have opportunities outside of this town, which I have had, and in times and seasons where it's been hard to stay here um, because of other opportunities, I can read my life and say, I have a higher value on my husband and I being connected in the season we're in. That's a higher value to me than this opportunity. So I'm going to trust whoever you trust. Um, and I trust the Lord. I'm going to trust God that he's going to provide for me right where I am because I'm reading my life well. So for a lot of leaders, they need to do that work and say, am I called here? Is this where I'm supposed to be? How do I shut the door to other opportunities so I can be present, which means this challenging relationship that I'm in right now, I'm meant to be in it. I'm supposed to be here. I have something to learn in this struggle, and that will help you show up much more present in that relationship.
How about your Let's Be Real podcast, mm -hmm. um, which is very much about also, again, relationship, which is yeah. something I love, the consistency, because that means you really understand it. <laughs> understand it. So what are your, some of your favorite topics to discuss on that Let's Be Real podcast? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's funny that you said that, Anne. I'm like, yeah, we never run out of things to talk about when it comes to relationships. Every relationship is nuanced and different. And as you begin to explore it, you're like, wait. And then the other crazy thing is that that we're also changing. We're dynamic. We're growing. We, we enter, we leave and enter into new roles that require us to relate differently. So yes, it is a topic that can never be exhausted. Um, but you know, the number one thing that my listeners have um, wrote to me about and ask more about than anything else is boundaries. What are boundaries? How do I live into them? How do I let my yes be yes, my no be no? That seems like an area where all of us have to grow um, and that it takes grit, it takes courage, um, and it takes sort of agency to claim and understand our resources and deploy them effectively. So that's one of the main, the conflict and boundaries are two of the main topics that come up. I must say I have problems sometimes with the boundary bit because it's never knowing and let your no be no or yeah. it's something something says to me, oh, you still have to say yes. And yes, yes. that then me too. I mean, I struggle. And that and that's you know what I write about in the beginning of the miracle moment is guys, I, I say I'm not good at this. And I, I often tell people, you shouldn't really follow people who are good, naturally good at what they're doing because they're not good teachers. They, right. they just aren't. And so if a person is just naturally genetically gifted as an athlete, they might not be your best personal trainer. Actually, the person who struggles, who has to work hard, they're really good because they understand the struggle and yes. they know how to teach it. And mm -hmm. that's my experience with relationships. I'm like, I am not, I would, I have not been good at this. I continue to struggle with it. I need all the tools that I've, I've learned. And I impart those to my readers and listeners because I'm not good at it. <laughs> so a boundaries is a place that I'm continually growing and, and having to coach myself and seek counsel in order to uh, really, um, I think it's, it's maintaining integrity. And that's what I like to tell people about boundaries. Boundaries is about you having integrity. And I want to have integrity. And um, that's one of my words, uh, my value words. So I need help to continue to that process of becoming more and more authentic to myself. I'm glad you mentioned that because I hope, I, I hope most of the people listen and we'll be, be able to understand that you can achieve boundaries. You can't, you know, it's all about, and I love that word integrity because mm -hmm. you feel that your time is precious to you and you know what you're doing is important you don't realize the value of your work or value mm -hmm. of who you are and that says that helps you set that boundary you you're very passionate about bringing god's words to life in a personal and relevant way because mm -hmm. you know it's very difficult especially in today's world to bring his word to light and then not just in personal but in so things that are meaningful to people mm -hmm. listening because you well, it's one thing i'm listening though am i listening to it to is it relevant in today's world yeah if you do that very nice why do you believe it's so important to face up to our own reality and embrace mm -hmm. the transformation of the power of god's grace so oh, thank you so much for asking um you know for anyone listening or watching Almost everyone I know who is interested in spiritual things has had an experience of faith. So you've been to a wedding or a funeral or, or, or something, or you, you went to church as a child. And many of us have had very um, sort of measly experiences of faith where we walked in. I remember particularly one time walking into a church. It was a funeral for a close family member. And this um, I knew that this family member's friends were not ever exposed to God. They had never, this was, they were coming out of respect. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what an opportunity to know how relevant, like the, the Bible actually teaches us about human nature. It is about you and it's about me. It really is. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh gosh, it's such a cool experience. And then God bless this pastor. It, it just was so irrelevant. It was platitudes and it was a sing-songy voice. And I thought, this doesn't feel real. This isn't 
actually giving people what they need. And so for anyone listening or watching who's had one of those church experiences, I want you to know that does not define who God is. That is human nature and human limitation and tradition that sometimes doesn't feel like it gives you the grit that you need, but um, following Jesus does give you the grit that you need. And the reason I'm so passionate about getting to teach the Bible, which I do on another podcast called How to Study the Bible, is because so many people have had that experience. They're seeking more. They're, they're, they're looking for truth. They want direction. They want to understand the world and themselves differently, but they haven't had that just that they haven't crossed that bridge where they're like, oh, that's what that says. That's what that means. I just recorded a podcast where the apostle Paul, who wrote most of the new Testament, which is like the second half of the Bible, he talks about where he's like, oh my gosh, I'm wrestling. Like I want to do these things and I don't do them. And the things I want to do, I don't do. And I'm like, who, who of us has not experienced that? I mean, might as well be a page from your journal. <laughs> You're like, why can I not be the person that I want to be? So when people around me who are seeking spiritual life, haven't had that bridge where they understand, wow, it's super relevant. This stuff, if we can kind of get through the cultural stuff and get to the other side of it, God has something to say in your life today for you. And, and who did, who wouldn't want that kind of um, direction and power in their life. My final question, which I have to ask you, is that you've done this very well, is that how can you share your thoughts on being successful in the pursuit of finding your joy and the transformation mm -hmm. movement? Because this is all about people want to, the reason sometimes we have bad relationship because we feel, um, if I'm mean to this person, I can be successful. I could bully this person to be, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, to quiet them down and I yeah. get my way in life. Yeah. Yeah. This is what a lot of us believe that um, bullying is what gets us to where we need to be. Mm. But in, in that, we forget we're all humans, that yeah. we are humans and we need to be kind to one another. As much mm -hmm. as you're looking for that transformation, you need to be kind. Mm -hmm. How do you help people who are going through that phase of feeling, I am this person and I need to achieve this goal. I need to achieve this dream. And I'm not going to stop at anyone who's going to right. stop me, bringing out the human side in a, in a human dream. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, 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 I was laughing because I was like thinking of people, which of course I would not mention, but I actually love, I love those people because a lot of that is like, man, you are driven and you, you have influence and you have power, your strength mm -hmm. to your personality but how do you, how do you put guardrails around that strength in a way? And, and oftentimes like, I believe in being shrewd, meaning like, I believe in speaking people's language for the language that they need. And so for someone who is used to this mindset of like, I've got to push other people down in order for me to rise up, or I'm going to get what I want. And if you're in my wake too bad, the shrewd answer to that is that actually there is a ton of research coming out in organizational psychology that proves that in the long term you will not be successful with that approach. Like that, that will not actually get you what you want. You may get what you want, but you're going to be alone. <laughs> so, if that's what you want, and you, and I mean, normally, truly, I would say this to a client: if that's what you want, if you want all these things and you want to be alone, then you can do it that way. If you want all of these things and you want to have a fulfilling life that has connection. And relationship in it, you can't have it both ways. And, and sometimes people who are in that mindset, they actually need to, to deal with that reality. They need to look at, the, at in the face because it doesn't work to, to be like, well, just be nice. Um, the other thing that I know is that people like that, um, generally, they have a story. They have a wounding story in their life that has made them that way. And um, do you watch Ted Lasso? Yes, I do. Okay. So yes. almost everyone watches Ted Lasso. If you don't watch Ted Lasso, let me just say, they are not paying me, but you should watch Ted Lasso. So in Ted Lasso right now, there is a uh, developing storyline where there are two people who are dealing with being bullied and how they bully very differently. And I don't want to give away any of the storyline, but pay attention to that because people who are bullies have two ways to deal with being bullied. They either allow that pain to be redeemed and to use their strength for good, or they will repeat those same exact patterns that they've experienced in their life. And the way that this show is playing that out so beautifully, and you see the destruction that it causes is a beautiful wake up call to say, wait a second, 
do I want to be successful and alone at my 80th birthday party? Or do I want to be successful and surrounded by loved ones? Because if so, I have to spend time thinking about what that means for the way that I show up in the world. Wow, Nicole, that was amazing. I'm truly honored. How do we get copies of your book here in the United Kingdom? For anyone um, who might want I, to. You guys have Amazon, right? So it works. Yes, it, it, it's, it's available on Amazon. So you guys should be able to find it there. And you can connect with me online, which is easy. Nicole Eunice, it's an unusual name. So it's easy to find me. <laughs> It was very easy to find you once you put this <laughs> it's just like you're the first person that comes up on Google. So that's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this conversation on transformation and how we use it to transform our relationship and everything we do. This is Absolutely. Crazy. It's really rare people um, focus on that subject. So I was so glad to mm. reach out to you and have this conversation. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Time. Thank you. You're a delight. I appreciate the time. Thank you.